Hello. Welcome. 2 p.m. Bible study, Genesis, chapter 6. Been working through it. Come on, boy. Over here. Everybody wants to see you. Jump in. Jump in. Everybody loves you. Good boy. Want one of these? Ooh, you, ooh, you want one of these? Ooh. Whoops, you missed it. Hello, friends. Good to see you. Quickly, quickly, remember, this is a discussion. Good afternoon, Steve. This is a discussion. We are having a discussion. Um, that means you are free to participate, which means you can ask questions, make comments, and I will get to them Oops, as soon as I possibly can. Spam risk. Who would call except spammers? Hi, Betty. Nice to meet you. Linda Kimmel. Good to see you. Hey, Jacoby. Terry Lynn. Cheryl, happy July. Hi, Priscilla. How you feeling, Priscilla? One more share. We're good to go. Hmm. Hi, Colonel. Good to see you. I'm so excited. I'm just, I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control. And I think I like it. Miss, buddy. Good. You better bring your A game or I'm going under my blanket. One more treat and we'll start this baby up. Good boy. One more. Good boy. Yeah, we got some um, hate mail that Thor could no longer catch treats. You see it? Oops, that was a bad throw. All right, let's get let's get rolling. We are in Genesis chapter 6, and I want to roll back a few verses. We did the Nephilim yesterday. So, two churches. The church with Cain as its head, and the church with Seth and Adam, the line which is Christ. And there are a lot of people other than the people mentioned so far, but really there are two churches. And so the sons of of God, Seth's line, find the sons of man, Cain's line, hubba hubba, and they take wives from them, which create all sorts of havoc, because first... um, They are doubting what God did for them. And that becomes unbelief. And that unbelief is lived out in marrying who they shouldn't be marrying. Good boy. Hi, Mike. Good to see you. So I want to actually start with five. Six, five. And I don't know how much we're going to go today. Remember that the great bearded one. Oh, we just missed it. It would have been such a good behind the back toss. The bearded one is taking the service, uh, taking the uh, Bible class tomorrow. So you will be with the great and mighty Hebrew scholar. Thinker. Today, you are slumming with me. And Yahweh saw the great wickedness in men, in the world, and all 
of the ooh cagiatio is the latin for this um what's the um dia neo neetai that 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 is the 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 mindedness the the cognitive stuff going on um with man uh is um it, all of, all of their thoughts in which they they think of his heart is um was only evil every day. So the Hebrew, when it's like continually, is like every day. So what do we learn from this? Well, what I absolutely love about this um, is Luther's take on this. And I think it, it should be uh, sort of contemplated just a wee bit. How do you confess man's free will when every cognitive thing that they cognitively work out in their hearts is evil every day? How do you do that? How do you do that? Hey, uh, um, Jacoby, uh, Nadine has a question for you, which you can handle afterwards. Um, I meant to do that yesterday, but... Um, Nadine asked me a, a question and I, I didn't know the answer to it. And so I stalled and said I was going to handle it later on in the week. Right off your face there, bub. So make sure you handle Nadine's question later on. I only work here. All right. I don't even get paid. So, um, uh, hi, Abigail, the Lord be with you. Um, what, 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 what I want you to sort of to grasp from this is, is first, how do you confess a free will? And Terry Lynn is right when this is the way we are. Um, the, 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 the sort of middle age, middle ages folks that were trying to justify themselves used to say that this was the way things were pre pre flood and that somehow we're better. We're not, we're not. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, no, not at all. Not a bit. Every inclination of our, every cognitive thing that we use to think is evil every day. All the time. There's no sugarcoating this. There's no avoiding this. We're evil. We're not the Diet Coke of evil, just one calorie, not evil enough. We're actually full on. Every thought that we have is evil all the time. We're evil when we're telling the truth. We're evil when we're not. We're evil when we're telling people, hey, I'm going to need you to trust me on this. No, we're evil. Can you imagine what that would be like? Look, every thought that I have is evil all the time, but I'm going to need you to roll with me on this one. Oops, you missed it, bud. How's that work? Well, that's who you are. Well, Joseph, you are most excellent if you know the Hebrew word for pomegranates. Just don't miss this. Every inclination that you have is evil all the time. There's not some of you that's good and some of you that's not. It's not 50-50 or 50-40 or uh, 10, evil, good, neutral. It It's evil all the time. You wake up in the morning, you have evil thoughts. You go to bed at night, you have evil thoughts. And every thought that you have in between, every... Um, Luther makes a point to say that's not... Um, uh, that um, that uh, 
it's the intention like every every sort of fly by thought hey bud how's it going the intentions are or what's bad um that's like when you're when you're when the juices start flowing in your brain and the smoke starts coming out of your ears the stuff that you're working through is evil all the time and look I'm just going to take a pot shot at the culture, and so you'll have to forgive me for it. Um, If we're going to rip down people's statues because they've done an evil thing, no one will have statues. Except for Jesus. We hate him too. Our thoughts, our stuff, is soiled by sin. True story. And it's not just some of the time, it's call Hayom, all days. Thanks, buddy. What a good boy you are, giving me some loving. And this is bad. And if you think it's bad, if you if you sort of like, man, this is bad. You're overstating your case. No, 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 no. No. Let's take a look. What's going on, bud? Oh, you're seeing your reflection in my sunglasses and you think there's another dog here? And so you're about to jump it? That's that's just that's just the sunglasses, dude. And Yahweh. What are you doing, bud? Um regretted was sorry that he made the odd the the made man on the earth and it and it grieved him and it grieved him in his heart or to his heart high five good boy yes The star is here, Brian. He's doing his thing. Oops, you missed it. Oops, you missed it. Oops, you missed it. Oops, I threw it poorly. Just stuff it in your face there, bud. So this is as bad as you think it is. If you read this, you're like, man, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad news. That's bad. Well, you've read it right. Because it's so bad that God repents, he regrets making it. Which is an interesting thing since the the root of that form is similar to Noah's name. He's sorry. He consoles himself. He's bummed that he even made the earth. Can you imagine that? I mean, just think that through for a second. Um... God regrets making man. That's what this has come to. That's what this that's what has happened now. And again, I do not like the sounds that are coming from over there. Hey buddy, you want to come over here? And again, if you somehow think that you're any better or that people are any better than this be warned 
You're not. They're not. Which means judging others brings condemnation on ourselves because we do the very same things that we judge. Because every movement, cognitive work in our minds, and in, which is in our heart, is evil every day. He's playing with his toys. And, and it's so bad. You're so vain. You probably think this song is about you. Yeah, yeah, it is. This one is. This one is about you. God regrets making you. When, um, it's bad news. This is bad news. And why? Because we're filled with murderers, idolaters, adulterers, thieves, gossips, coveters, those who despise his word, those who despise his name, um, and the like. It's always good to memorize the commandments in their proper order. Therefore, when you start rattling them off, you don't forget which one. Which ones you've done. The whole thing makes God sad in his heart. Think about this. And my son, George, has been getting on me about pounding the, the, um, the cancel culture. But there is just new room to cancel anyone. Uh uh. Uh uh. Get in your bed. Hey, he's in that mood. He just about took out a fan because there was a plastic bag on the on the cord. Get in there. Thank you. Good catch. I only got one treat left. Oh no. God regretted that he made the earth. And I'd be silent, too, because there's nothing to say about this. But there's absolutely no room to cancel anybody if all the thoughts that you have are sinful, too. That's the issue with this culture. This culture, while appearing to be somewhat Christian because it is for... um, um, Look how innocent he looks. Because it's for equal rights and equal protections under the law and everybody being treated the same. But when you start condemning people to an eternal... Death. To be outcasts in society because of their sins, who will be able to stand? That's why Christians, their response should be, you know what? Um, well, this Sunday's gospel, be merciful as your heavenly father is merciful. We should walk around being, saying, I'm going to be merciful because my father in heaven is merciful. I'm not going to be quick to judge because my Father in Heaven doesn't judge me. I'm going to be quick to forgive because my Father in Heaven forgives me. I'm going to cut people some slack because I, because my Father in Heaven has cut me some slack in the giving up of His Son. I'm going to have mercy because I've been shown mercy. I'm going to be forgiving because I've been forgiven. And if we come across somebody in our history who has been an absolute utter failure in one part of their life, I'm going to cut them some slack too. The Thomas Jeffersons of the world, the Christopher Columbuses of the world. I'm going to cut them some slack too because God is not going to play the videotape of me. Not to mention the fact that social norms change over time. And if you live long enough, the stuff that you um, that, is, that is okay isn't going to be okay for you. For example, when I first became a... Uh, when I first... Became a pastor. Chanting was the mark of a um, confessional Lutheran. I'll put it in quotes. Um, and then it became certain certain vestments. And then after that, when I had the chanting and the vestments, it became certain colors of vestments. It was an ever-moving thing that you became more and more confessional the more you would move up the chain. 
and the culture changes that way too. Um, where it was totally acceptable to be a certain way 20, way, 20 years ago, and that is um, forbidden now. All you need do is look at transgender studies that, that five years ago, uh, uh, gender, gender identity disorder or gender dysphoria was an actual um, uh, uh, mental illness in the book of mental illness. Is that the DSM uh, version five? Now, now, Little girls are losing to boys that self-identify as as girls in races. Again, but five years ago, ten years ago, the culture viewed it, viewed something else, and now say those things. Um, let's just uh, and I and hey, even in the last six months. Um, we went from an argument in which uh, folks would say um, uh, uh, I don't want to go there but 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 the, but the fact of the matter is is we're gonna have mercy we're gonna have mercy on people we're gonna forgive we're gonna we're gonna um, we're not going to judge people because every thought and intention of our hearts is evil every day. And if people start getting knocked off their pedestals, the only statues that will stand on the last day are Jesus. Cause he's the only one without sin. I don't know what you mean by it's, is it a sin to state the obvious Brian? I, I I, I would have to, I'd need more behind your question than that, that it's obvious to you, your question, but it's not obvious to me. And so you'll have to, you'll have to bear with me, but, um, no place to judge anyone, no place to hate anyone. Um, Terry Lynn's got to love me with all my faults because of Christ, not because I'm lovable. And Brian, I'm going to love you despite you being smarter than me because of Christ. When you say we're going to have mercy, what do you mean? Um, we are not going to throw people into penalty boxes for their sins. It's hard sometimes to forget pain, Pastor. I need to keep on. That. Yeah. Well, let's 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 sort of deal with that. Um, a couple of things. Um, The sins against us, and here we're going to set aside violations of commandments which would get people thrown into jail, murder, theft, and the like. The, th the sins against us, we should look at in terms of, look, I got so many sins. My inclination is evil every single day, all the time that I have no ability to look at you and, and, and hold your sins against you. Um, I got uh, recently a uh, four page single space letter. Um, and, um, it was bad. It was evil. It wasn't actually true. Most of it. And, my knee-jerk reaction was to put the person under discipline for gossiping and lying. Um, but then I realized, while teaching y'all, that um, Christ, is, Christ allows folks to say all sorts of things about him. And he holds nothing against them. I can too. So if, if you sin against someone in my church, I will put you on discipline. But if you sin against me, I'm not going to put you on discipline. Please don't sin against me, but you get the point. Now, um, 
some of the things people do or say or think about us is so awful that it hurts us so bad. And this is Terry Lynn's point. That it's hard to let go of. And God understands. Hey, this verse is for you, Terry Lynn. And the Lord regretted that he had made the earth and it grieved him in his heart. I wish I had never made you. Made man on the earth. I wish I had never made you. Um, and that's, and, and that's the, um, that's the thing. Oh, that's, um, that's a good point. Stating the obvious racism for many, many years to point of, of tears. I don't blame everyone, but I earnestly want someone to just understand the perpetual nature in my mind. Right. Good point, Terry Lynn. And the Lord is working all of us through this, this, this time in which we identify ourselves, look at our sin confess our sins to one another and receive forgiveness. I haven't always loved my neighbor as I should. I haven't always cared about my neighbor's needs as I should care about it. I, I, I haven't always looked at the, 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 um, looked at how my neighbor's being treated or how I treat my neighbor or subconsciously how I deal with my neighbor because everything about me is evil all the time. All the time. And that's the reason why I cannot hold sins against people. I just can't. Not, I just can't. I just can't. Did I tell you I can't? I just can't. Because God doesn't hold sins against me. And what we do when we hold sins against people, when we what we do when we cancel people based upon their sins, what we do when we do that is we say that Christ died for everyone but Brian. Because I'm not going to forgive Brian's sins. They're just too awful. That's not how God and Christ deals with you. So how on earth could you deal with others that way? Can you imagine the hurt that God felt and experienced? Your sins are forgiven, Brian. But um, the, the, the hurt that God experiences when he regrets that he made man on the earth and it grieves him in his heart. Now remember I asked you to read Genesis as if every time Yahweh's mentioned the Lord, you were thinking that it was Jesus. Let's read this again. And Jesus regretted that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him in his heart. Does he know your pain? Does he know your hurt? Does he know how it feels to be wronged? Does he know how bad it is for you? And how much the indifference of others hurts. And how people not caring hurts. Does he know that? You bet your sweet bippy he does. And I don't even know what a bippy is. Although it has been sent to me and defined. And Jesus regretted that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him in his heart. So the Lord said...
I will wipe out the man which I barad, which I made from the face of the Adamah. So Adam was made from the Adamah. And now Adam is going, mankind, is going to be wiped out from the face of the Adamah. Oh, but not just you. Man, animals, and all the creeping animals and birds of the heavens, Shamayim. Oh, I love that. Um, for I am regretting that I made them. And if it was to stop here, Terry Lynn wouldn't be saved. Brian wouldn't be saved. No way Newman would be saved. Jacoby wouldn't be saved. Um, Abigail wouldn't be saved. Jennifer wouldn't be saved. Donald wouldn't be saved. Emma wouldn't be saved. You know what also, buddy? You wouldn't be saved. You don't. He, you didn't tell me he was sulking in the corner over there. Well, he thinks he did bad, so he's he's sulking. No one would be saved if the thing stopped here. If this was the end of the text, it would stop here. God's going to destroy everything. No one, Bobby Joe, lives. But no one. Mazah, he found Hain. Oh, grace or favor. In the eyes of Yahweh. The Greek is Nora, Noah found grace before the Lord God. Are you kidding me? You're heading to the pool, Lestico. Our friendship is off, Newman. Love you, man. Have a great full time. This is the end of this section. The next section begins with another Tola Doth. But, um... This is really important. This is really, really important. Because the guy who would be comfort for us, who do evil daily and much all the time, he found favor with God. He found favor with, in the eyes of the Lord. These are the Toledoth, the generations of Noah. Noah was Zadik, righteous. He was a righteous man. Faultless in his generation. And he walked with God. Noah walked with the God. Um, and the and the word order is spectacular here. The God walked with Noah. even though Noah is the subject. The word order is excellent. Walked with God, like Enoch, twice. Blameless in his generation. But we know that he's not blameless because we're going to see his sin soon. Righteous. 
righteous. Dikaios in the, in the Septuagint. Righteous. Uh, and and um, uh, Teleos in the uh, Septuagint, um, he was complete in his generation. Noah was well-pleasing to the God. And Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, Japheth. Um, and the three sons, because of the way they were introduced in the previous chapter, could be triplets. I don't have an issue with that. But this is a new section. Uh, the new section begins with the Toledoth, the generation of Noah. The previous section ends with Noah finding grace with God. And God saw the Haaretz, the earth, and behold, it was corrupted. It was it was spoiled. It was ruined. It's the Hebrew word. For all flesh. Derek is um, is the way. had corrupted their way on the Haaretz, on the earth. And God said to Noah, an end over all the flesh has come. For the, for, for, for the face of the earth is filled with violence. Through them, I will destroy the earth. Why? Why does he do this? Why is he going to command Noah to build a big, big boat? Why? Why does he do this? Because everything has spoiled everything. Yeast has spread. The yeast of sin has spread through all the world. And, and, and he's done. Remember, he started the clock. I'm going to give him 120 years. And nothing happened. They did not get better. They got worse. And the intention of all of them is evil all the time. Ooh, what a bad time for my voice to break. That sounded a little high there. Um, it's awful. And the only thing he can do is scrap it. I will destroy the earth. Uh, Jennifer, it never stopped. There were still eight people on that ark. And they get off the ark and, well, Finker's problem on Thursday. Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark and cover the, it inside and out with pitch. So we're going to make this thing waterproof. And it's going to be a big, big boat. Won't be a big, big boat. This is how you make it. The length of the ark, 300 cubits. Its breadth, 50 cubits. And its height, 30 cubits. Yeah, he's going to hit Control-Alt-Delete. That's why I run a Mac, Bobby Joe. 
Because I can hit t control alt delete until the cows come home and everything works. Make a roof on the ark and finish it to a cubit above and set the door of the ark in its side. So you get this sort of like a cubit is like a probably like an arm's length, something like a foot. This is a big deal. And there's a slot of about a foot around the top of the arc, probably for airflow. Make it lower, second and third decks. Um, story time. Look, I absolutely love the arc that's in Kentucky. But I didn't want to see it. Um... I was at a, a baseball game seeing the Mets play the Reds and I was staying with one of my elders and he like we had a, like it was like a, a day game and then a night game and so he went to the day game and he's like we have all day to wait and I was like sounds like a day off it's like let's go to the ark I'm like I don't want to do religious stuff day off but how do you argue with one of your elders wanting to go to the ark and I was set on, on being like, look, let's just drive by it. Is it in uh, Ohio? Okay. Um, let's just drive by it. Because once you see it, it's like, oh, the ark. That's how big it is. But that there is brilliantly done that you cannot see it from the interstate. You cannot see it until you go and pay to see it. And so this wonderful elder of mine has this story of dragging his pastor to the ark. Because he had to day off and once I saw the ark I took a picture of it I think I'll post it uh, sometime me in front of the ark um, it's a big ark you know what it is it's a big big boat but when you see it 300 cubits it's in a very impressive sight it is a very very big boat we're on patrol now. Somebody's in the hallway. The point of this, this is a really big boat. Good thing they have 120 years to finish it. Big, big boat. Here at this point, I want to take a moment. And I just want to say, I want you to get the Higher Things app. All you need to do is go to the Higher Things website, click app. There's a place for it, app, their new app, our new app, and um, get it. Google, Amazon, iTunes. Great place. You can get this app. It'll be a gift to you. You'll, you'll get all of the, the stuff that we do streamed right to your phone or iPad or the like. Um, is this going to end up with a, um, Erica with an Apple TV app, Amazon fire stick app. Cause that'd be cool. But all, all this good content, you get directly to you through the app. Check it out. You can do a search on your favorite, uh, um, app store. Just do the search for, um, higher things Lutheran. It'll show up every time. Top of the list. That's a word. For our sponsors. Verse 12. And God saw the earth and behold it was corrupt. It was spoiled. For all flesh had spoiled it. Spoiled their way. On the earth. Is that an app already available? On Apple TV and Roku. Roku. Erica. And God said, I have determined to make an end of all flesh. God said, I have decided to make an end to all flesh. All flesh has come 
to an end. For the earth is filled with violence. Um, Hamas is the uh, Hebrew word here. Does Hamas sound familiar to you? Hamas is a group. A Palestinian group. And their name means violence. Um, from the face and behold verse 13 I will destroy I I'm going to I'm going to it's spoiled and I'm going to spoil it further they've destroyed it and I'm going to destroy it so I'm going to bring it to an end because they've done this Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark, covered inside and out with pitch. This is how you'll make it. It's length, 300. Breadth, 500. Height, 300. Height, 30. For behold, I will bring flood waters upon the earth to destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life under heaven. Have a great day, Brian. We're almost done anyway. I will bring flood waters upon the earth and destroy all flesh in which is the breath of life. The breath that he breathed into Adam. Anything with that is going to be done. Everything that is on the earth shall die. And all which is on the earth, says the Septuagint, shall come to an end. But I will cut a covenant with you. Um, you shall come into the ark. You, your sons, um, their wives, your wife, your wife, your son's wives with you. Almost done. Got to give Finker a clean slate there. And, um, of every living of, 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 of all the living from all the flesh, you shall bring two of every sort or every kind into the ark to keep them alive with you. They shall be male and female. So you're going to build an ark and in it, you're going to bring two of every kind of living thing. Birds, according to their kind. Animals, according to their kind. Creeping things, according to uh, things that creep on the ground, according to its kind, two of everything, of every sort, shall come in with you to keep them alive. And you got to feed them. Also, take with you every sort of food that is eaten. And store it up. It shall serve for food for you and them. And this is the big deal. This is the big deal. Don't miss this. In a world gone mad. Dogs were on the ark. But probably only one kind of dog, Thor. He's over there sitting on my chair on the um, on his phone. Only one kind of dog. So you don't need to have every kind of tiger. You just need a cat. You don't need to have every kind of dog. You just need a dog. You don't need to have every kind of 
Um, every kind of lizard. You just need a lizard. Each according to its kind. Did they have popcorn on the on the ark? You ate what they ate, Thor. I wish you would have left the mosquitoes behind. <laughs> well, that's actually they're mentioned the, the the things which another translation for the birds or the insects. It's really things that fly. Good good thing, Jennifer. But I don't want you to miss this. And Noah did he saw all which which all the commands which which God gave. Thus he did. So here it is. In a world gone completely bonkers. Finker's trying to figure out where to stop. In a world gone completely mad, Noah does everything the Lord says. And it repeats it. And all that the Lord, all that God told him to do, he did. He did it. And this is where we stop today. On the verge of the flood, the ark being constructed, the plan given, the world full of evil people, the water's going to be rising. And Noah, righteous and walking with God, does everything that the Lord God told him to do. And why do we believe this? Why do we believe that Noah built a big, big boat? And the answer is not because there is a uh, ark in Ohio. We believe that God did all of this because Jesus makes reference to it. This is the way it was like in the days of Noah. So we're going to let the guy who rose again from the dead tell us what really happened and what really didn't happen. And it doesn't matter that other cultures have an ark story. That, that doesn't bolster it at all. Because we believe what I, we believe because God said so. And by God, I mean Jesus makes reference to this in the Gospels. If they'd have seen what you've seen, they'd have believed. And they stand in judgment of you now because you don't believe me. But Noah, comfort, I said Kentucky too, Maggie, and I was corrected. Thank you. Stick to your guns, Borkart. Maggie, don't just love Thor, you're off, you're useful. Um, this is about God's faithfulness. This is about God saving people. Think about it. He could, um, he could, he could have destroyed the whole thing and started over with a different creation. Instead, he saves eight souls in all, believing no one his family. Because that's the kind of God he is. He does not end in judgment, but ends in life. But that is tomorrow with Pastor Finker at 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time. He will take you through Genesis chapter 7, and then we will pick back up again on Monday with Pastor Finker again, and you'll get me on Tuesday for whatever he says for me to do. Have a blessed day, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.